does an MTHFR 677T genetic polymorphism matter in psoriasis? That's what I want to dive into today. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. The MTHFR allele is a big time topic of interest in the alternative medicine worlds. It's a big deal because it's tied to fertility, it's tied to thyroid function, it's tied to psoriasis, it's tied to all types of health challenges. And so I want to look at it in the context of psoriasis today. Does an MTHFR SNP or polymorphism, meaning you have one or two poor copies of the allele, does that cause psoriasis? And if it doesn't cause it, does it impact psoriasis? The answer is yes. The MTHFR allele can impact psoriasis, but studies show that it is not causal in the psoriasis pathogenesis. So MTHFR mutation does not cause psoriasis, but studies show that it does impact the severity of the psoriasis or has a role in exacerbations of psoriasis. What am I talking about? Well, let's dive into the methylation cycle for you to understand this more fully. Now, this is the methylation cycle, and the methylation cycle is a physiologic process that takes the amino acid methionine donates a methyl group and the leftover part becomes homocysteine. And when the cycle is functioning properly, you could picture these two circles as gears. When those gears are turning properly, then the homocysteine is going to be recycled back to methionine give up a methyl donor, become homocysteine, be recycled to methionine, give up a methyl donor. And so you have an efficient process of methylation, which basically is turning genes on or off. Well, MTHFR plays into this process because MTHFR is this black box right here, which is the gene involved in the methylation process. MTHFR requires folate to function or vitamin B9. If you don't have enough folate, specifically methylfolate, then the MTHFR gene isn't going to function as efficiently as possible. So this recycling process doesn't happen as efficiently as possible and homocysteine can build up. Why is that bad? Homocysteine drives high levels of oxidative stress or free radicals and results in high levels of inflammation. This is why homocysteine is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and dementia because high oxidative stress and high inflammation promote heart disease and promote neurodegeneration. Studies have shown as recently as 2019 have shown that patients with psoriasis tend to have higher levels of homocysteine and lower levels of folate, which is an indicator that the methylation process isn't functioning well and is going to promote psoriasis via oxidative stress and inflammatory mechanisms. So no, the MTHFR gene isn't causal in, in psoriasis, but if you have and inefficiency at that gene, it can exacerbate psoriasis due to increased levels of homocysteine driving up oxidative stress levels and inflammatory levels, thereby exacerbating the disease, worsening the skin lesions, etc. So the real take home here is that we shouldn't hang all the blame on MTHFR for the various diseases that it's associated with. We can't hang any of the causal blame on it in psoriasis, but what we can do is hang blame on exacerbations. And so instead of blaming it, what we wanna do is make sure that patients with psoriasis have sufficient 
methylfolate on board so that when this process wants to happen, when that gene wants to work, it has the cofactor necessary to do the work, which then spins the cycle and methylates genes so you can express genes properly, but then recycles the homocysteine so that it's not building up driving oxidative stress and inflammation and worsening of your skin plaques. I hope this cleared some things up for you. And what you want to do is work with a practitioner who knows how to crack the case, so to speak, of your psoriasis. The MTHFR contribution, the homocysteine contribution, the folate tie-in, all of that is just one small piece of psoriasis. It's unlikely to be the linchpin or the answer in your case, but if it's not discovered and is present, it may be the thing preventing you from getting to optimal like you desire in addition to making dietary modifications and lifestyle modifications and addressing other comorbidities that are present in your case. So putting the pieces together to all this is complicated and generally conventional medicine is too specialized and doesn't have the time or desire to do it. So seeking out a functional medicine practitioner that wants to do that detective work, that wants to look at you as the holistic perspective and individual person that you are and put those pieces together is going to be key to you reaching a life at Optimal.